Earlier this week, Binance reached a historic settlement with U.S. regulators. Cheng Peng Zhao is expected to plead guilty to violating criminal U.S. anti-money laundering laws again. As part of this settlement, Cheng Peng Zhao, or CZ, has stepped down as Binance's CEO. This news has taken the crypto world by storm. Many believe it's bullish for the pending spot Bitcoin ETF applications, but others believe the settlement conditions could reveal damning info about the industry. That's why today we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the settlement, including how it happened, who was involved, what's been decided, and what it means for the market, and particularly for BNB. Let's start with the background. Binance has been under investigation by U.S. authorities since 2018. This appears to be due to a combination of the fact that it's basically been the largest crypto exchange since the 2017 bull market, and because it didn't require KYC in its earlier years of operation. For context, every financial institution in the world must collect Know Your Customer or KYC information. This typically involves showing your national ID or passport to verify who you are. These regulations are global, but they have their roots in the United States' Bank Secrecy Act passed in the 1970s. Now, believe it or not, but cryptocurrency exchanges were initially not required to abide by these regulations, at least not in most countries. It wasn't until 2019 that the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF, called on its member countries to begin imposing KYC and anti-money laundering, or AML, regulations on crypto. If you've watched any of our videos about the FATF, you'll know that it's an unaccountable and unelected international organization that appears to be closely aligned with US interests. You'll also know that it's been pressuring countries into complying with its so-called recommendations for crypto regulation. Naturally, this pressure intensified in 2020 when the crypto bull market began, and the result was that cryptocurrency exchanges around the world were forced to implement KYC. In 2021, Binance followed suit. For reference, any countries that refuse to comply with the FATF are put on its grey list or blacklist. Being grey listed essentially makes it more difficult for financial institutions in that country to interact with the rest of the global financial system, whereas being blacklisted effectively bans them from it altogether. The irony is that a lot of global illicit financial activity continues to take place in the United States, but it sure ain't on any list. Anyways, the practical effect of forcing crypto exchanges to conduct KYC was that they had to stop serving users in countries like the US. For those unfamiliar, companies which work with money in the US, including crypto exchanges, must get a money transmitter license from the Treasury Department. And if they offer derivatives trading like futures or options, then they must also register with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or CFTC. Obviously, the same is true if they offer securities trading, like stocks, in which case they must register with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC. And in addition to all the above, any crypto exchanges operating in the US must abide by sanctions laws. This means that they're not allowed to do any business with individuals or institutions from sanctioned countries, such as North Korea, Syria, Cuba, Iran, Russia, and the parts of Ukraine occupied by Russia. As you might have guessed, Binance was charged with failing to implement proper KYC and AML procedures, operating in the US without registering with the Treasury or the CFTC, and violating US sanctions laws. The only charge against CZ is for failing to implement proper KYC and AML at Binance. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to smash that like button to give it a boost. Now, here is where things get interesting. Although Binance had been under investigation by US authorities for years, it wasn't until this year that said authorities started to act. This is interesting because it's circumstantial evidence to the idea that there's been a coordinated crackdown on the crypto industry. If you watched our video about Operation Choke Point 2, you'll know that the collapse of FTX was used as an excuse to go after the industry. 
While it's believed that the first enforcement action against Binance came from the CFTC in March, it technically came from the New York Department of Financial Services in February. To refresh your memory, Paxos was ordered to stop minting BUSD, the Binance-branded stablecoin. By that point, BUSD had hit a market cap of almost 23 billion and was growing fast. Since that time, BUSD has shrunk down to less than 2 billion and could no longer be redeemable as early as February 2024. We'll come back to that later. Anyhow, as I noted, the CFTC announced it would be suing Binance and CZ in March for, you guessed it, violating derivatives rules. Then in June, the SEC announced its own suit, not only alleging securities laws violations, but also commingling user funds and manipulating the crypto market. Now, these allegations are more significant than you think. That's because the two main reasons why the SEC has not yet approved a spot Bitcoin ETF is precisely because it has alleged that there are issues around customer and market manipulation. What's fascinating is that this was not included in the settlement. This might have something to do with the fact that the SEC was actually not part of the settlement. It was just the Treasury Department, the CFTC, and the Department of Justice, or DOJ, which seems to have simply coordinated the settlement between Binance and the Treasury Department and the CFTC. Now, some of you might remember that the DOJ was reportedly concerned about launching an enforcement action against Binance because it could cause the exchange to collapse. What's strange is that the DOJ was reportedly considering a fraud charge, but there were also no fraud charges in the settlement. In any case, most of you will probably recall the high-profile resignations from Binance that subsequently occurred. Binance and CZ were only formally indicted, that is, charged, on the 14th of November. Based on our understanding, the settlement was reached on the 20th of November, the day before it became public. As a fun fact, the reason why we only heard about the Binance settlement on the 21st of November was because this was the day that CZ and Binance representatives appeared in court in the US state of Washington, specifically in Seattle. Per the plea memorandum, quote, As an initial matter, the government has moved to keep these cases under seal until the plea hearings begin in open court. That said, you could have known that a settlement was coming eight months ago if you were keeping up with the Coin Bureau. That's because we covered the report that Binance was preparing to settle way back in February. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel so you keep up with these updates. Hold up a second there, Guy. Sorry to interrupt, folks, but I just wanted to very quickly tell you about the Coin Bureau deals page. Now, this is the place where we have put together some of the very best deals and promos in all of crypto. So you can think things like exchange sign-up bonuses, trading fee discounts, and money off of hardware wallets, and much, much more besides. So if you want to check that out, coinbureau.com forward slash deals is the place to go, or you can just use the link in the description of this video down below. Thanks very much, and now back to you, Guy. Anyhow, this brings us to the settlement itself. As you've probably heard by now, Binance has agreed to pay a fine of $4.3 billion, and CZ has agreed to step down as CEO, pay a fine of $150 million and potentially spend up to 18 months in prison. Now, it would be an insult to icebergs to say that this is the tip of the iceberg. Shortly after the settlement was revealed, top personnel from the DOJ, the CFTC and the Treasury held a press conference about the settlement, including Merrick Garland from the DOJ, Rostin Benham from the CFTC and Janet Yellen from the Treasury who has since gone viral for her pronunciation of Binance. Or should I say, Binance. Binance. Now, leaving aside Janet's scene-stealing, the press conference was shocking, to say the least. It started with Merrick announcing that Binance had pleaded guilty to the allegations I mentioned earlier, namely breaking American KYC and AML laws, failing to register with the Treasury and CFTC, and violating US sanctions. Merrick then proudly presented the massive fine I just mentioned, $4.3 billion. Now, per the DOJ's official announcement, $2.5 billion will technically be forfeited by Binance, whereas the remaining $1.8 billion 
will go towards paying the fines levied by the Treasury and the CFTC. For anyone wondering, the reason why $2.5 billion was forfeited was because US authorities estimated that Binance had made $1.6 billion in fees from US residents and had also transmitted roughly $900 million to people in sanctioned countries, per the plea memorandum. The more you know. Now, here is where things get a bit scary. Merrick went on to explain that, as part of the settlement, the DOJ will implement strict monitoring and reporting requirements on the company. Notably, Binance will have to file suspicious activity reports and go through every past transaction to find suspicious activity. Newsflash, but this means that any bad actors in the crypto industry who are using Binance will likely be caught in the coming months. Merrick specified that they will pay extra close attention to any transactions involving specific groups of an incredibly unsavory nature. Regarding CZ, meanwhile, Merrick said that he pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act, i.e. breaking KYC and AML laws. Not only did CZ break these laws, but he also knowingly navigated Binance to avoid them wherever possible, because he was hyper-aware that this would result in maximum growth and profit. The consequence of this was that Binance continued to serve US customers without registering with US authorities and simultaneously served users from sanctioned countries, apparently resulting in transactions between Americans and sanctioned individuals. I wonder who those were. Speculation aside, Merrick emphasized the fact that Binance only pretended to comply with US regulations under CZ's watch, resulting in hundreds of millions of dollars in illicit transactions and trades. Now, not sure who needs to hear it, but banks do the same with billions and get a slap on the wrist. And that reminds me, I reckon some clarification is needed here since Binance also has a US entity. To our understanding, these crimes and the settlement do not pertain to Binance US as it is a separate legal entity. Everything I'm saying here refers to Binance's international operations and corporations. Now, once Merrick was done airing Binance's dirty laundry in detail, he passed the mic to Janet, who proceeded to tell the press about the Binance settlement. For the most part, she said the same things that Merrick did. The difference was she revealed that the Treasury had been investigating Binance for three years. During that time, they found that Binance had claimed to exit the US market, but had not. This ties into a crazy statistic that Merrick mentioned, and that's that almost one-fifth of Binance's user base was in the US in October 2020. Binance had claimed to exit the country in 2019 with the launch of Binance US. Janet also dropped a couple of crazy statistics of her own. At least 100,000 illicit transactions to sanctioned actors and 1.5 million trades that violated US sanctions. These statistics prompted Janet to reiterate that Binance will be required to report all suspicious transactions it has not reported on to date. And here is where things get intense, so listen closely. Janet added that Binance will be monitored by an entity representing the Treasury for the next five years to ensure it exits the US market. This monitor will have complete, I repeat, complete access to Binance's systems, transactions, and accounts. And it's extremely important to note that this monitoring is in addition to the aforementioned monitoring that the DOJ will be doing. In its announcement, the DOJ specified that its monitor will work within Binance for the next three years and focus on KYC, AML, and sanctions violations. Now, before Rostin took the stage, another representative from the DOJ chimed in. And this is where things get seriously chilling. She said, and I quote, This sends a message to crypto and DeFi companies. If you serve US users, you must follow US laws. And that's not all. A little later on, she said, and I quote, These rules apply equally to centralized and decentralized exchanges. Translation, US authorities are coming after DeFi, and it seems that everyone missed the memo. 
And speaking of which, when Rustin took the stand, he revealed CZ will pay a fine of $150 million to the CFTC. It seems that this has been misreported as just being $50 million. Now, this is understandable since CZ will also pay a $50 million fine to the US government. This will be subtracted from the $150 owed to the CFTC. So, put simply, CZ will pay $150 million in total. 50 to the government and 100 to the CFTC. Capiche? Good. And here is where things get interesting again. Rostin made it sound like this settlement began with the CFTC's enforcement action back in March. He proudly said that this enforcement was resolved in eight months and that this was proof that the CFTC is the leader in crypto-related regulations. This is also more significant than you think. If you've watched any of our videos about crypto regulations, you'll know that the CFTC and the SEC have been fighting over who gets to regulate crypto. The CFTC is generally believed to be more pro-crypto than the SEC, which is objectively anti-crypto. The CFTC's presence and the SEC's absence therefore gives the impression that this enforcement action was coordinated by pro-crypto entities behind the scenes. The absence of fraud, asset commingling and market manipulation charges could also be circumstantial evidence of this. Now, all of this relates to the responses during the subsequent question period, which were even more revealing. A reporter from CNN asked whether the US's strict regulations would make it difficult for crypto startups to get off the ground and ensure the existing players achieve a monopoly. Merrick said the law is the law, so yes. The question from the Bloomberg reporter was an even bigger bombshell. They started by saying that crypto is still not sufficiently regulated and said that this settlement is unlikely to have any real impact on the nature of the crypto market, presumably a reference to USDT's use in almost all crypto trading. They went one step further by highlighting the fact that this settlement is surprisingly favorable. Binance can evidently afford the fine and it will continue to operate, while CZ likely won't go to jail. Every single person on that stage then proceeded to desperately defend the settlement unconvincingly. The question from the Financial Times reporter was a perfect way of ending the press conference. They asked what the priorities of US regulators will be going forward regarding crypto. Notably, the reporter pressed on the geopolitical aspect of crypto in a way that could again have been a reference to USDT. The panelists, if you can call them that, said that these cases take a lot of time without providing any further detail. Typical. So this begs the question of what comes next for Binance and CZ. Well, thankfully, it's surprisingly easy to find answers to those questions. As it so happens, a full recording of CZ's appearance in court has been circulating on Twitter, aka X. It's worth a listen if you have the time. The TLDR is that it's ultimately up to the judge to decide what the appropriate penalties are for Binance and CZ. In CZ's case, you'll recall that a $150 million fine plus a maximum of 18 months was the agreement. However, the audio of CZ's appearance reveals that the judge could theoretically increase this prison sentence to 10 years. In that case, though, CZ's lawyers would appeal and not go quietly, so to speak. Here is where things get spooky. The judge in question was appointed by former President George W. Bush. Not surprisingly, this judge appears to have a history of being in favor of government overreach. This could be bad news for CZ when he appears in court on the 23rd of February, 2024. Mark your calendars. Now, what everyone's been talking about over the last couple of days is whether CZ will be allowed to leave the US while he waits for the court date. As you've probably heard, the US government is trying to force him to stay and is appealing to the judge, the actual judge, to review his temporary release order. Per the audio of CZ's appearance, the judge has until 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday, the 27th of November, to review the release order. If he does, then CZ could be stuck in the US. If he doesn't, then come Monday, CZ will be free to go where he pleases in the interim, likely back here to the UAE. 
On that note, you've probably already seen CZ's lengthy tweet announcing his departure from Binance and his future plans. For starters, Richard Teng has been appointed as Binance's new CEO. He's the former head of Binance's regional markets, and I actually interviewed him on Coin Bureau Clips just recently. Link in the description. But back to CZ's tweet. CZ also said, quote, As a shareholder and former CEO with historical knowledge of our company, I will remain available to the team to consult as needed, consistent with the framework set out in our US agency resolutions. Now, this is peculiar because CZ is supposedly prohibited from being involved with Binance. This was mentioned during that press conference, which is what makes CZ's comment even more peculiar. That's because he will reportedly be allowed to keep his majority stake in Binance. As reported by Forbes, the fact that the prohibition only applies for three years means he could someday return as CEO. In the interim, CZ said that he will, quote, probably do some passive investing, being a minority token slash shareholder in startups in areas of blockchain slash Web3 slash DeFi, AI and biotech. I'm happy that I will finally have more time to spend looking at DeFi. Now, from our perspective, this could potentially be bullish for BNB. That's because CZ noted in a tweet last year that his portfolio was 99% BNB and 1% BTC. Assuming this is still the case, then it stands to reason that CZ would focus his future crypto activities on BNB. And last but not least, CZ said that, quote, I am proud to point out that in our resolutions with the US agencies, they do not allege that Binance misappropriated any user funds and do not allege that Binance engaged in any market manipulation. This was also tweeted by Binance co-founder Yi He. So, this brings us to the big question, and that's what all this means for crypto. By now you'll know that the answer is nuanced, meaning that it's both bullish and bearish. So, let's start with the bearish side to get it out of the way. The Binance settlement is clearly a part of a larger ongoing crypto crackdown in the United States. More importantly, the arguably last-minute timing of the Binance settlement suggests that it was driven by recent events, primarily the constant FUD about crypto being used to finance certain illicit activities, and the subsequent calls from politicians to investigate the crypto industry. Case in point, there were many references to these illicit activities during the press conference. What this suggests is that the Binance settlement was only half the story. The tether question still remains. On the same day that the Binance settlement was announced, Tether published a blog post saying, quote, In line with its dedication to upholding the integrity of the financial ecosystem, Tether recently onboarded the United States Secret Service into its platform and will be working with the Federal Bureau of Investigation to do the same. This strategic initiative aims to extend crucial support to victims affected by crimes under investigation by the US Department of Justice. Now, this suggests that Tether is currently in a similar position to where Binance was with the US authorities not so long ago. The difference is that Tether may not be allowed to continue operating in its current form. This could actually be likely if the Binance settlement was coordinated by pro-crypto entities. As I've been hinting throughout the video, the absence of fraud asset commingling and market manipulation allegations means that the SEC has no grounds to reject the pending spot Bitcoin ETF applications. This is presumably why CZ and others have been focusing so much on this fact. Not only that, but it's likely that a more aggressive takedown of Binance would have done irreparable damage to the global crypto industry. The only powerful entities in the US that care about this are the asset managers like BlackRock, and it's possible that they convinced US authorities to settle with Binance. Take a second to consider that asset managers are the ones who have been lining up to buy the US government's debt. Without their cooperation, the Treasury would not be able to fund itself without causing interest rates to rise. 
This gives asset managers immense leverage over certain regulations. And here's where things get intense again. If you watched our video about stablecoin market caps, you'll know BlackRock manages the reserves for Circle's USDC stablecoin. USDC's market cap has been sharply in decline for over a year and a half. Meanwhile, USDT's market cap has been hitting all-time highs. Unless BlackRock is secretly managing USDT's reserves too, then this gives them an incentive to reduce USDT's dominance and increase USDC's dominance. The orderly unwind of Binance's BUSD proves that it can be done, and some would argue that it needs to be for a spot Bitcoin ETF to be approved. The SEC has specified concerns about USDT in its previous spot Bitcoin ETF rejections, after all. And this pertains to why the Binance settlement is bullish for crypto. Besides the fact that the close oversight of the largest crypto exchange by US authorities increases the chance of a spot Bitcoin ETF approval, the fact that this settlement was achieved with minimal market disruption proves how resilient crypto really is. As Tree of Alpha noted on Twitter slash X, a stablecoin with a $23 billion market cap was shut down and a record-setting settlement was negotiated with regulators of the most powerful country in the world. And yet, not a single sat was lost, while Binance and the crypto market continue to operate as normal. What this shows the world is that the crypto market is ready for the institutional flows that will inevitably come. It's possible that there will be more pain between now and then. But in the end, the gains will be bigger than anyone could have imagined. All that will be left to do then is to make sure that we win the next war for crypto. And you can learn more about that using the link in the description. OK, that's all for today's video. So if you found it informative, be sure to let us know by smashing that like button. If you want to make sure you stay informed, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help inform others, be sure to share this video with them. If you happen to be looking for a place to trade your crypto or keep your sat safe, check out the Coin Bureau deals page. It's got trading fee discounts of up to 60% and up to $40,000 of bonuses on the best crypto exchanges, as well as the biggest discounts on the best hardware wallets. The link to all that will be down in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Guy, over and out. Thank <laughs> you.